Welcome back. We're still on our program, The Virtuous Woman. And uh, on the topic, The Virtuous Woman Part 2. Uh, if you want to follow us, you can follow us on our social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and our phone numbers are right on the screen right now. You can bring in your questions and contributions, and we will appreciate. And uh, we are still with our guest, Sister Ijoma Mwilisen. Thank you for being with us up to this moment. Um, I want to ask this question. In reading, I'm making reference to Proverbs 31, verse 10 to 31. You know, when you read the attributes, the qualities, the virtues of the virtuous woman, and then you, where the man comes in there, you will think that the man is redundant. Is the man redundant? A man married to a virtuous woman, is he redundant? No, not at all, not at all. He is not. The Bible cannot contradict itself. You know, uh, the man who is married to a virtuous woman, to the, 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 the virtuous woman is just there to compliment him. Mm. If, if, you, if you go to First Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, I said, if any cannot provide for his own and the people of his own household, mm. he has denied the faith. You know? And he is worse, worse than, than an infidel. infidel. Mm. You know? yes. So the man, the role of the man there is stepped out. And the woman, the virtuous man that one, the first chapter 31 has then to that one is to complete complement to help to help that, that man is that the man is the so is the provider is the provider is the major provider is the major provider and the takes woman the lead is a helper and the woman follows and the woman is yes, a helper the woman helps him mm -hmm. you know for you know to give good support like uh, English people they say that behind every successful man mm. there is a woman. It's not that the the woman is the one doing it, but she gives support. Yeah. Even in our present day society, yes. you know, with the harsh economic yeah. climate, you know, it becomes even really difficult these days for the family to depend solely on, on the husband's uh, yes. income. So it becomes necessary, you know, for the woman to assist in one way or the other. Okay, okay. So I think God is a perfect God. His word is perfect. You know, he who knows the end from the beginning or who knows the times that we're living, even right this moment, from the beginning, so the beginning who made like provision a like for a time like this, for a time when the economy will be very harsh and then we will need the economic input of the wife. Um, the other question that I have for you is this, you know, um, you know, when a woman is economically empowered and then she's self-sufficient, it makes her self-confident, you know, we know that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And I have been privileged to meet some women, you know, when all of a sudden they become economically empowered and they begin to have problems at home. You know, could you say that, you know, is there a way out? Yes. Uh, I will say that uh, those women that allow power to corrupt them or intoxicate them, so to say, They are not virtuous. They are just it's industrious. They are women. just industrial women. A <laughs> virtuous woman who is industrial can never allow power to intoxicate her because she knows that she has a position where God placed her and that she got that power. She got that power not by her own power, mm. not by her own ability, not by her own strength. Not by her own wisdom. Not by her own wisdom. Everything is by the grace of God. Mm. 
and if she she knows that she is not complete without God, she cannot allow power to take over her and bring her to that kind of attitude where she will become the Lord, so to say. Where she will become the um, she will be full of herself. She will be driven by pride. You know. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, in, in other words, let me just help. You know, say one or two things. You know, when that attitude of arrogance and pride is satanic. Yes, it's it's satanic. no longer of God. No, it's, it's not of God. A virtuous woman is a complete woman. She has. She's successful. God. Anything she's she does, she knows is for. Yes, she's she's successful, confident, yet humble, mm -hmm. and knows her place as a woman. Woman, uh, I will also point out Esther. I love that lady so much because she came from this background. Because most times people you see, you know, that allow power drive them to crazy. I call it being crazy that uh, when we are growing up, we say that some people that are full of themselves are those people that never knew they can get to where they are. Of course, that's true. You know? Uh -huh. Esther, the Bible told us she's a slave girl. You know, she was brought up by an uncle, not even her parents. Mm -hmm. You know? On and on and on, she had this virtue as a virtuous woman of humility, obedient, that she even of loyalty, she allowed herself to be trained. She has a teachable heart. She allowed herself to be trained. She's not the only person that came for the preparation. After a queen was there before, but she was not a virtuous woman. She didn't allow herself to, she didn't display obedience to her husband, to her husband the king. and she was displaced. Uh, and when Esther eventually became the queen, she has power as a queen, she has her own limit, she still understood the law of the land. She applied wisdom in everything she did by allowing God to take over her and she was able to penetrate her husband and got what she wanted. Okay, we won't go as far when you talk about Esther, it does not just end when she or start from when she got married. But even in preparation, you know, to be married, she exhibited virtue. They should stem from obedience. Yes. She allowed the um, the eunuch the, the eunuch Chamberlain Chamberlain. to dress her. You know, she was teachable. She had a teachable spirit. She 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 had wisdom, yeah. knowing that these Chamberlains have been in this business for so long. Let them be the ones that we dress. Yeah, right. And you know, Brother Brown typed the Chamberlain as the Holy Ghost. Let every woman allow the Holy Ghost to dress you. Yeah. You know, to direct your life, to direct your affair. That is what we have learned from that story of Esther. Esther. And because she allowed the Holy Ghost to dress her, or the Chamberlain to dress her, yes. she won the heart of the king. Okay. My dear viewers, if you allow the Holy Ghost to dress you, then you can be sure you will win the heart of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Continue, my sister. So, with that, I would say that any woman who allows power to intoxicate her is not a virtuous woman. There's no two ways about it. Is it that you're a virtuous woman or you're not? And what I would say is that any woman that allows, you know, uh, your capital 
I mean, economic empowerment, you know, to make you proud, arrogant, you will live a miserable life because you cannot, you, can never be happy. you, you, will, you will find yourself living outside the will, the perfect will of God. Because what God expects of us is to be humble and peaceable with people around us. And once you are a married woman and maybe you just find yourself making money and you decide, okay, now you are equal with your husband. My advice to you, viewer, your sister is that you should take you you retrace your steps That's back right. then find out where you are found wanting in the will of God and God. make amends and make peace God. that is my advice to you, to you watching me right now and if you have any contribution and any comments any question our social media is displayed on the screen there including our phone numbers get in touch with us uh, my sister uh, the question the next question i want to to ask you is this how can a, a brother was asked he said can an unbeliever or unbelieving woman be virtuous an unbelieving woman If I understand, a non believing woman is that woman that does not believe the word of God? Yes. Yes. A non believing woman cannot be virtuous. Somebody that does not believe the word of God cannot be a virtuous woman because virtue is from the word of God. The virtue we are to live is from the word of God. And if you don't believe it, I don't know what you are living. Praise the Lord. You know, I, I look at virtue as an English word. No. Yeah. And, uh, it's an English word yes. in a way. Yes. But what we are talking about, what I believe we are talking about, is how it relates to us as children of God. How is it best? I, I said something that you can be good. They're not virtuous. They're not virtuous. You can be. What you're saying now because is that virtue. you can be humble, you can be at peace with your neighbors, mm -hmm. you can be God fearing. Yes. God. You know, and um, you can be honest, sincere, straightforward, hardworking, and not be a Christian. That does not make you a virtuous woman. Mm. Because I can tell you, some other religion, yeah. some of the women fulfill all these criteria. Yeah. And yet, you know, what, how do you describe such women? Well, if it's on that note, I will agree with you that because what you say, said is can an unbeliever if you say can a woman be a virtuous woman and not be a, a Christian and not be a Christian yeah you understand but there are still people that are inside the church so to say that are not virtuous because they are unbelieving they did not believe they are in the church for being in the church. No, the question is unbeliever. It, it takes somebody who believes in Jesus Christ to even be in the church. You know, but the level and the, the level of our knowledge mm -hmm. is what you know separates us from one another. Yeah, when we, so when we make a reference and say an unbeliever, we are talking about somebody who is not in the four you know four corners of the church, okay. who is not a church goer. And that was why I made reference, you know, to um, I made reference to other, other religions, yes. other religions that uh, you know they are not Christians. They are not even church Yes, you can find virtuous women there because some of them possess these attributes. Some of them, some women, 
out there, you know, who grew up probably under the tutelage of a virtuous woman, you know, that is not herself. When she grew up, she was taught by a virtuous woman. She might not be inside the church, but she is a virtuous woman because she was taught by one. You know, a virtue, some virtue was invited in the uh, white room. Okay. So what you are saying is that uh, um, a virtue does not necessarily have to do with those that are in the Christian faith, but you can have all these virtues, you know, and yet, you know, be an unbeliever. You know, but what stands you out, out, you know, but as a Christian woman, as a Christian woman, you know, it's natural to possess these virtues. Yes. And again, I want to put something here. These virtues cannot come to someone who does not believe in God because it's Christ that brings out this virtue in you naturally. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes, you cannot do it on your own strength. You cannot just be humble, unforgiving, uh, forgiving, um, modest, um, honest, and on and on and on, hardworking, loyal, without you know being having your strength from Christ or from the Holy Spirit. Let me use this word. You know, our foremothers, you know, we're used to using the word our forefathers. Mm -hmm. Our foremothers, you find out that they displayed all these qualities we're talking about. That, you know, it's our modern day woman that have issues, you know, of... You know, uh, you know those are foremothers, oh, yes, they believe they are not unbelievers. I don't call them unbelievers because that time, they have what they worship. They have, they worship something. They worship God in their own way. They believe in God in their own way. They were unbelievers. As long as you don't believe that Jesus Christ came to die for us on the cross of Calvary, you are an infidel. You are an unbeliever. That's what the Bible says. There's no two way about it. We cannot give excuses, you know, for them. They were serving idols, you know, so you, we cannot use them as our standard. But we are just saying that uh, they, they possess a good life. Yes, they, they, they possessed all these virtues, you know, but the fact that they possess the virtues does not does make them, them the virtues. No, they don't make them Christians. We're talking about Christians now, Christian, because. Um, what I'm, I pointed out earlier is that what differentiates, you know, the virtue we're talking about now from a Christian woman is that a Christian woman is, is you know, the prerequisite of every Christian woman to be virtuous. Yes, and it's natural. Yes. It comes out natural. It's not just about training you or know, whatever. You know, it just comes once, out natural. Even if you are not well brought up, mm -hmm. By your parents. Yes. Once you have the spirit, the spirit of, of Christ God in you, in you, it will turn you naturally. Teach you. Those virtues will come up inside of you. Yes. You know. Yes. So that's what makes the difference. But the the, our the virtue of our foremothers come as a result of the upbringing, upbringing, the way they were brought up, yeah. the way they were trained. But a Christian woman, girl, whether you have any basic. Home home training or not, or upbringing. As fact, soon as you have the spirit, spirit of God dwelling in you, you, automatically those virtues will begin to develop and grow in you. I believe that is how it yes. is. I believe so too. So viewers, you have had it all. Uh, we will take a break and we'll come back for the final segment of to this episode, The Virtuous Woman. Stay tuned. <laughs> 